Hey everyone and welcome to another Ranger View special. I'm your host as always, Archer9234. Today's episode will be dealing with me building my new computer for the new series update for HD. I need a new computer in order to deal with HD because HD is far more uh, he intensive and more complicated to deal with. So that's the reason why I took this entire year in order to get all the new parts. I decided to break this uh, how-to video basically into three sections. The introduction, which is this video. The building assembly video, which will be over here. And the boot up, boot up startup installation for Windows over here. It's more easier this way so that you can choose sections you want to watch or you just want to watch them in order. It, it's easier as a chapter point. Let me introduce you to all the new parts and stuff that will be going into my new computers. First up is the Intel Desktop Board DX580 SO2 Extreme Series, which supports the Intel Core i7-940 processor. It has many other different co cool features such as Bluetooth support, Wi-Fi support, six RAM slots, and of course, um, USB 3.0, ESA, ESA to ports from the outside, and a and it also supports other cool things such as um, going into BIOS mode without opening the case from the rear. And also an emergency power switch system on the bottom of the motherboard itself. My only gripes for this piece of hardware is that it doesn't come with the IDE port. So unfortunately, one of my hardware that I used, my old DVD burner, will now be scrapped and thrown out because I can't use it anymore. Next up is the Intel i7 core processor. Its speed is 2.9 gigahertz. I won't be using the stock fan that comes with it. I'll be using the Hyper 212 Plus from Cooler Master. I prefer this one over the stock one because mainly this one allows you to hook up any 120 millimeter fan, and plus it has more cooling features such as um, the the heat the heat pipes are directly touching the CPU, so it should be a, lo a lower cooling temperature for this. The hypercooler also supports i7, i5, i3, AMD2, 2 Plus, and AMD3. Next up is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 570 with 1280 megabytes of GDR5 RAM. I picked this over the 580 because I needed to save some money in some place, so I got the 570 for $100 cheaper rather than spending over 400 bucks for the 580. Pretty much roughly the same. It has a standard Direct 11 support, 7.1 surround sound, physics, and the NVIDIA 3D Vision Ready support, and of course the SLI um, multi video card connector as well. Next up is the cordless desktop MX X550 cordless Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. I bought this because my original keyboard was wireless, and but it, it was too cumbersome to deal with. Uh, editing videos for hours upon hours on end, so I said, let me get a new keyboard. Next item on the list is the Intel X25 SATA solid drive, hard drive, for my new computer. In order to keep the computer at highest speeds as possible, I got a solid state drive that matches the exact same size as my original primary drive, so that um, this will go faster because there's no moving parts. Next up is the G-Skill DDR3 RAM stick of four gigabytes. I bought six of these in total, so my RAM output will be a total of 24 gigabytes. Now I know some of you are asking, why the hell do you need 24 gigabytes of RAM? That's insane. Well, you need 24 gigabytes of RAM because H editing HD and swapping between multiple programs is extremely intensive on the system and you need all that you can get on the system. My motherboard supports up to 48 gigabytes of RAM, but I was only only going up to 24 because when I saw the prices for eight gig, eight gig sticks, it was too ridiculous at this point, so I stuck with only four. Next up is the Hewlett Packard Blu-ray ROM drive DVD combo I bought. This will be replacing my original DVD burner drive that I can no longer use thanks to it being an old-fashioned IDE cabled drive. This is only a Blu-ray reader, it's not a Blu-ray writer. It only writes all the DVDs and CD types only. I bought it mainly because at this point in time, Blu-ray uh, reading and writing technology is too early and too expensive, so I foregoed writing and only went for reading. Next up is the Thermaltake Black Widow PC Gaming 850 watt power supply unit. Now I picked this one because it has a really cool feature which it actually lets you choose which power connectors to actually put into the case. So 
So instead of normally having every single plug outlet stuck in the case when like maybe only 50% of the cables are being used, you're gonna have to choose which ones you want. Molex cables, PCIe cables, or your SATA power cables. You can, you can put them in which way you want, save space, and reduce heat buildup inside your case. And finally, the Avira video capture card. I bought this so I can capture anything I need to do, such as gaming, if I ever needed to record videos to do dealing with gaming. I've done it before, but I never was able to record from HD. Or if I ever needed to make my camera act as a web camera, I could simply plug it in through the video card and set it as a web camera. As always, if you want to see the other parts and sections of the videos, please click the left or right button for boot up or assembly.